Here we go. We're, uh, we're going to play right. this doggone open, all which right. is now four years old. Four years Ooh. old. Here we go. It's a classic. I know. I'm not changing it. It's time for Demon Benning. Who does that? Are you ready? The handoff to Benning straight ahead. Scoots 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown. Yes, sir. Demon Benning. You think you could tell us what to wear? Demon Benning. You think that you're better? Demon Benning. And a corn. Better get ready. Get to knock the ball. He carried a hokey with him. Bow to the masters. Demon Benning. Snap to Frazier. Option left. Passes out to Benning. Swings it out wide inside the 15 and down the five. But down again. Damon Benning. Get your tinkle a little hot. I like to play from the rear. And they didn't have big enough balls for me to use. And Damon Benning. The handoff goes to Benning over the right side. Fights his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Damon Benning. It's kind of a match made in, I don't know where you call it. Damon Benning. He's so big. He looks long, doesn't he? I struggled a little bit with the star qualifications, that's all. Do I have your attention? Hello. And Damon Benning. Break it down. I forgot to put the uh, disclaimer on at the beginning. Disclaimer? Yeah, the disclaimer that the following segment may have sports and sports opinions. Whoa! So if you're... With Damon? If you don't like sports or sports opinions, please turn off the radio or we, 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 we're we not responsible for the next 15 minutes. Okay, because it's Damon, not because it's us. Yeah. Be- better yet, make sure you go like full-fledged nine-year-old and run and tell. Hey, you know what? I don't really like what those guys are saying because they won't just shut up and dribble and run a ball. So I think, um, gosh, I, these, are these gosh darn minorities, man, they sure are talking too much. I don't care about <laughs> opinions. I'm going to call their boss. So I can put their boss in a precarious position because he hasn't been around long enough. So he'll probably send us an email, and I bet he'll piss those guys off. So here we are. Of course, here we are. Of course, what Damon's talking about? Hypothetical. Of course, when he says minorities, he's talking about my people because oh, remember, the gingers. because remember, our people are actually starting to slowly go extinct. Mm. So. No, no, By minorities. I met like. People that talk on the radio that don't do exactly what they're told. Oh, no. oh, oh I'm so sorry. <laughs> come on, come on, hey oh, hey oh, hey, hey, uh, hey, we had a scrimmage. Oh, we had a scrimmage this past weekend, which is why we're doing a DB so, break. That's so why Damon's coming on. Yeah, believe it or not, the <laughs> Illinois game didn't happen, and you just all missed it. Okay, good. Because that would have that that would be just a little awkward. But uh, now now. I know that that Frost said last week when he was to spoke last Friday that this wasn't going to be a major scrimmage. He was going to have a major scrimmage later in the week, maybe early next week. So, I, what did what exactly was the goal? What were they trying to work on? Do you think with this first one? I think a lot of it was situational, right? You you want to see guys um, kind of perform in, in in certain situations. I think for some guys, a lot like they did in the spring. Uh, you put them against talent for certain periods of time to see how they respond. I think one of the, the, the best examples I have of that is, is Noah Pola Gates, who is held in very high regard, but I think they wanted to stretch him. So you saw him play virtually four quarters in the spring game. Didn't mean he wasn't a good player. I think they wanted to see how he responded to certain stimuli and playing with and against different calibers of competition. And I think that's a lot of what they were trying to accomplish on Sunday as well. I think they have a good idea, but there's probably a handful of guys, maybe 10 or 12, that I think situationally they want to see how they respond. Damon, I I don't think you had a chance to go to practice last year, just given all the restrictions with COVID, but I know you did in 2018. I know you did in 2019. How would you say practice is the most different now compared to what it was in years one and two? Uh, Not near as much tempo as much as I think trying to keep guys busy. Mm. Um, so it's not so much about moving fast as much as it is finishing and then getting the next group ready to go. I think finishing the ends of plays and playing through the whistle has been kind of the, the, the greatest 
I, I think change that I see. And it's more like, it's not so much, Hey, let's hurry on and get to the next one. It's let's finish this one, getting kind of a good uh, muscle memory habit. And then on to the next one. I, I think that's kind of the biggest difference that I've seen. Are they running more stations? Well, I think it's that's roughly about the same. Okay. Um, they've always been pretty good with stations and getting multiple people going. I think the thing for Nebraska right now is they probably have. Now I'm get this is speculation. I would say. 80 to 85 percent of that too deep settled so it's about moving that next tier around or how to stretch or test that 85 percent that i think you know i think that's kind of the tweaking that they're doing now because you have some positions shoot d line i mean uh, you go eight nine deep if you wanted to uh and i don't think that's stretching an offensive line i mean What's, who's going to settle in at, at left guard, right guard? Uh, what's going to happen with your backfield rotation? How are you in the world are you going to pair that wide receiving core down to the top six or seven guys? I think there are some positions where you're still kind of sorting your way through in terms of repetitions. It's going to be important. So, Damon, along those lines, you have some positions that, you like you think, that the depth chart is, is pretty much settled at this point. You have others that are not. How do you balance as a coach – um, with the veteran players and the younger players, teaching them the playbook and trying to maybe maximize it or expand it, but also knowing the struggles that they've had the last few years, focusing on the details of, of maybe individual plays. How, how do you think that works with, with this group, such a young and an old group at the same time? Yeah, see, that's kind of the balance, right? Because for every, you know, we say names like, ooh, Nick Henrich, I think he's really, really going to be good. He's been there for X amount of years. Nick's still only played in seven games. Right? Yeah. yeah. Seven. 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 But we talk, we talk about him as though he's this um, incumbent returning really, really good player. Now, the really, really good player part is true, but he still needs work. But with a rapidly thinning inside linebacking core, how much work do you really want him to get? Right? I mean, you've got Kalarvik, you've got Reimer, you've got Nick. How, he needs work but he doesn't need work. So rigor is always going to be the tough thing for them to negotiate. If I'm Adrian Martinez and I'm a four-year starter, I didn't love the way the season went last year. I would like to have me have a ton of reps where I have to take care of the football and, and go into rel- quasi-contact, but how much of that do I really need? If I'm Oliver Martin or Xavier Betts, or Samari Ture, I think I'm going to be towards the offensive top of this wide receiver chain, but I haven't played a ton, hmm. right? So I, that balance is always going to be the trick for Nebraska until they get real game reps under their belt. I mean, Deontay Williams and that safety core, Cam Taylor Britt, yeah, they, they want reps because you know what they're doing? They're building on having a lot of experience from the last few years of playing. But you know what they're not? They're not in fear of losing their starting job. So how do you next level those guys in terms of their packages and what they're able to build on from the last couple of years versus getting guys like Miles Farmer and, and Buddha Wright and guys like that valuable reps so they're able to play accordingly. I, that's going to be the trickiest part of this whole camp, especially with an, a zero-week game. Damon, you mentioned the wide receivers, and I'm pretty sure I asked you a similar question back in, in April after the open practice, but like the, the hype that that group has gotten, it's only continued now over the last few months. What, what do you think is fair about that hype, and, and where, where should we perhaps be pumping the brakes just a little bit with that group, given, like you said, we, 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 we think that they can be really good, but there's not a whole lot of proven uh, play, at least at the FBS level, on the field at Nebraska? Uh, the fair part is they're more talented from top to bottom than a year ago, right? But where I think you should be pumping the brakes is talent doesn't equate to production. You still have to go out there on the field and do it. So it's pretty exciting to see Xavier Betts a, a year 
along in this system as a young guy. It's, it's exciting to see a new addition of Ture, who's had a ton of success at the FCS level. Um, did I say FCS? Uh, FBS level. Um, wait, one of those levels. The whole <laughs> one A, <the> whole, <laughs> Division One A. <laughs> the whole telling on us has me shook. Um, so I'm so childish. <laughs> 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 You're on the right program. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. I feel good. Um, Volkolek and Austin Allen, right? Like, those are a pair of really good tight ends. But how much experience do we have seeing them flourish in this offense? Austin Allen has all of one touchdown catch. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, it's hard to negotiate. So the fair part is they're deeper on paper uh, than a year ago, but the pump the brakes part says, hey, we still need to come see this come to fruition. We'll call this the uh, Damon Benning mid-camp breakdown here as uh, Nebraska did a uh, scrimmage, a situational scrimmage on Sunday. By the fo- videos and the photos uh, from last week's open media session, there were a lot of compliments about how a lot of these guys look really good physically on the yeah. hoof. On the hoof, as we say in the cattle industry. Um, I like that. I like that. But but having seen them more in actual football light action, who actually looks good on those hooves right now? Um, well, for sure, Xavier Betts. Uh, Jordan Riley. Uh, Gabe Irvin. Perhaps the most pleasant surprise. We have Sevion Morrison, who looks significantly better than he did coming out of spring. Um, who else do I like? Uh, I really like Luke Reimer. Um, I wish Randolph Kapai did not have his arm in a swing sling. He's he's going to be a good player. Maybe not this year, uh, but I really like Kapai. Um, those are some of the guys that jump off right, you know, like right off the bat. I'm curious because obviously when you come from a lower level and you make your way up and we've heard good things, you mentioned his name a little bit earlier, Kalarvik. How does he look? Does he look like he's ready for a Big Ten conference slugfest? Well, the, play, the, the kids call him the freak. He's a, he's quite a tester. I. I didn't watch him watch him like I should have because he kind of got away from me. But when you look at him, like at first blush, physically, he looks all of that part. And the one thing that I take some solace in is say what you want. Northern Iowa is a well-run program. Uh, They play pretty good football. My first Big Ten game I ever did was Northern Iowa, Iowa in 2012. And so I'm very familiar with Northern Iowa's roots. I went to go watch Coach Frost teach a tackling circuit in the mid-2000s when he was at Northern Iowa. So the pedigree that that school comes with, I don't have any problems with, even though they've gone through a few changes at the top. Northern Iowa plays good football, so I don't worry about his football acumen. I think athletically, at least to the naked eye, he looks a lot better than maybe I would think in kind of seeing pictures. So along those lines then, Damon, are you, are you buying the idea that this looks at least like the most talented team Scott Frost has had? Well, physically, this is the best they've – and you know me, I would totally downplay it yep. if I could. Yep. I think that's pretty overrated. But physically, they they look the part. I Listen, I, I said this out loud. I actually think Cam Jurgens, a guy like Cam Jurgens, physically – he looks really good. He's got good burst. He doesn't have much of a limp. He He's athletic. And I'm like, oh, yeah, but then there are those snaps, you know. But I get that out of my head because if we're just talking about, you know, visually speaking, I I think on – listen, this Adrian Martinez, and you alluded to it last year, Josh. I know you were one of those guys that was kind of big on the, the, the overweight thing. Mm-hmm. He looks – vastly different hmm. than a year ago. He, I think he's, he's their best offensive player. Um, in my opinion, I don't know if Husker fans are going to roll their eyes or not, but remember, I'd rather be right than well-liked. I'm just telling you what I think I see. 
<laughs> That's a sports opinion. Sports. That's a sports opinion. Sports. Please do not. <laughs> please do not write any emails or send any uh, send any voicemails. Um, on the running back situation, you mentioned Gabe Irvin being one of those guys who looks good. Uh, we've been asking Mike Schaefer each week, hey, handicap us. Who's going to be the guy that gets the first running back carry? He, he uh, Obviously, all the talk last week about was about Marquis Step yep. and how he has improved from injury. More so are his timelines ahead of the game a little bit, according to everybody. Would you, uh, would you take the bet that Step will be the first running back to get the first carry? Uh. Oh boy, is it step or the field or step or somebody else? Well, he's got step at plus two hundred. He didn't handicap the rest of the field, but I'm guessing they're all pretty close. Ooh, um, boy, that's good. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with it's gonna be Irvin or Step, but but Sevier Morrison is gonna be heard from. If he stays healthy, he's the only long strider of the bunch, right? Where I, where if I look at a guy and I said, he gets in the open field, he runs differently than the other two. Now, that being said, he's got to get there. Um, but I take step or the field. Um, mm. If I had to bet, I'll take step being the game one opening carry starter. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Do you think Morrison, if, if, if even if Morrison doesn't isn't one of those top two or three guys, could he contribute on special teams? We haven't heard his name mentioned on special teams, but do you think he could? Oh, that's interesting. I doubt it. I doubt it. He doesn't have that. Um, he doesn't have that tight area space that I like. Um, and a returner. You know what I mean? Like a good traffic runner? Yeah. Um, maybe. He's got good hands, and he does have good long speed. So you could convince me, but they have so many other options. I'm telling you, the guy that I think we're forgetting about, if he's healthy and, dare I say, happy, I think we're kind of forgetting about a guy like Elante Brown. He didn't go through spring. So he kind of wasn't talked about. We kind of penciled in Toure as that slot guy. Alante Brown may be the fastest guy on their team. And if you listen to guys like Cam Taylor Britt after Adrian Martinez, who I think he put in the top two or three in terms of overall team speed, Alante Brown is definitely up there. DB, before we let you go, buying, selling, or holding notable, noticeable special teams improvement? Holding. Holding. Much better coached Mm. no question and i think last year there was this disconnect between level of communication and what the players actually like i don't think he was received very well so he was he was working uphill so as as smart as he may or may not have been from a schematic standpoint there was this level of communication that i think the players shut down early um much better coached but we'll see where the buy-in is, using a lot of different players. That part's going to be interesting. If Nebraska can change field position by, let's say, three yards on both sides and add a half touchdown to the red zone, so instead of 2-5 out of 4-4, go 3 out of 4-4, and you gain four yards each way, it's worth plus 2.5 in the win column, no question. Damn it, Benny, break down. He's going to break it down for you. Ooh. Nick, Nick, where did you find that drop? <laughs> Man. Hey, hey. Thought I'd erase uh, that one. Um, I made it through with having a few opinions. Dang yeah. it. Yeah. I had to stick to sports. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everyone who hates opinions. Um, We're out of time because I was going to ask how concerned should we be about Nebraska forfeiting a game this year? But no, no, we're out. We're out of time. We're We're out out of time. time. We gotta go. We're out of time. (laughs) We're out of time. We're out of time. Hey, I'm saved by Kirk Cousins. Thank you. Amen. (laughs) All right, DB. Thanks again, and uh, we'll look forward to real breakdowns very, 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 very soon. All right, appreciate it. You guys be good. You bet. That's Damon Benning, of course. Heard every morning with Michael Severe on Severe and Benning in the morning. When, when, when 
They promise not to give opinions. Well, that's it, it's an interesting four-hour show if you're not giving any takes. Well, speaking of that, a what you say that might trigger some folks. Is it just vaccine questions all the time? Yep, all vaccine all the time. When maybe a little racism thrown in. Oh! <laughs> wow. And, and the bet of the day. Or, as I like to call it, the guarantee of the day. I st- Are you even, still winning? Even, you're still winning? I come after, back and you're still even, winning? Even after losing three in a row. Hit me a nice little parlay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Greg Popovich, you underachieving wow. son of a gun. Wow, look at you. Look at you. I was so upset that Slovenia, they can't even make it to the gold medal game. Jerks. <laughs> All right, back with more in a minute. 1620 The Zone.